Hi, I'm Michelle from Michelle's Romantic Tangle, and I didn't check the number to see which floss to video this was going to be. So, number nine something? I don't know. It is Sunday in the middle of June, Father's Day. I'm a little discombobulated lately. We have had so much going on that I do not know if I am coming or I am going. But I keep having things come up and saying I'm going to cover them in the next Floss Tube video. And that video hasn't come yet, so this is a big happy catch-up of what I've been working on. I finished my second Christmas bobble. You can see I did a different direction with the stitching of the variegated floss. It was a lot of fun. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to do a third one or not because... These do take some hours to stitch, and I've got bigger projects that I'd like to be playing with, so we'll see. Like I said, I don't know if I'm coming or going, and probably won't for another few weeks. Here is Girl with Cosmos. I have moved on to knitting, knitting, stitching. Her dress, which is shades of white and almost white. I don't know how well that's going to show up there on the video, but that's what she is doing. And... I honestly don't think I have done anything on Little Girl's Fancy since I showed you the riff last time. But just in case there's something you missed. I am really excited about the Summer of Salem Stitch Along. The only thing I have managed to firmly decide is my needle minder, which I love vintage television sets. They make my heart go pity pat. I had seen these, they're from Mad About Minders, I had seen them on Etsy. I could not make up my mind which show. I wanted all of them and that was silly, so I wound up getting none of them. Then I saw in one of Audrey Stitchewitch of 42's videos, she got The Addams Family and something clicked in my memory. When I was growing up, my parents owned an appliance store and so we always had TVs in every room in the late 70s, early 80s that would, it would be reasonable to have a screen and we had a TV. Nothing like the what goes on now, but back then we had a lot of TVs. And one day my dad came home from work and someone had brought in two matching portable color televisions as a trade-in. And those became mine and my sister's. We had had... TVs in our rooms before that, but they were little black and white TVs you would laugh at now. And I remember watching Bewitched on that little TV, which looks amazingly like this little TV before dinner. I don't know how old I was, but my favorite part of the show was the opening credits, and I don't have any memory of the rest of the show from that time period. So I'm thinking I was pretty young. Then I got older and watched the show and loved the show and I got the whole thing on DVD so I may be watching that while I work on my Summer Salem project whenever I decide and actually commit myself to a pattern. I thought it was going to be Birds of a Feather Remember Me on Halloween. This is actually one of the very first patterns I bought from a needle workshop back in 2001-2002. Bought it at Acorns and Threads because there was an episode, episode, there was an issue of Stitcher's World where they interviewed the designer and she mentioned Acorns and Threads in Portland, Oregon. And as soon as I saw that, I was planning a road trip. So I thought I was going to do this. I w had my mindset I was going to do this and then I dug around in my stash some more and came across, what is this called? Be Scary by Just Nan. It looks easier. It's got specialty stitches, but it looks easier. So now I'm kind of wobbling between the two. I may come up with something else entirely. I don't know. It seems like I have more Halloween charts that I'm not finding, and I'm not quite sure. They're somewhere. I know I have some of the Halloween issues of Just Cross Stitch, and they're somewhere. I'm just not finding them yet. One of the things that did come to light while I was digging for through my stash was Ghoul's Night Out by Lizzie Kate. I bought this when my daughter was three or four years old. I had 
visions of stitching this for my daughter. I am never ever going to stitch this for my daughter who is now 21 and just know this is not her thing. So it has a witch. If you are looking for a cute little witch for your Summer of Salem project or anything else, I don't care. I'm going to give this away to one of my viewers. Leave a comment, Ghoul's Night Out, somewhere in that comment. And just before I do my next video, I will use the random number generator and I will send it to someone. Regular rules that everybody has on FlossTube. Don't mention giveaway in your comment. Don't don't be over 18 so you can send me your address or have your parent enter for you because that works too and hopefully someone will get some use out of it because I'm never going to I've had a little bit of accidental stash enhancement I stopped at Goodwill and found this one unopened I love it this is the kind of kit I would pick out so that is in my stash now. I had been vicariously participating in Stitch Mania watching everybody else's progress because I didn't have time to dedicate to cross stitch. So I went through my entire collection of kits and charts and narrowed it down to the 30 things I would have started if that made any kind of logical sense. And just for fun, just to see what I had and what my priorities were, literally the day after I finished the list, this went to the top. And the list has adjusted since then because, well, of course. Went up to Acorns and Threads, and I have Vintage Animals by Jeanette Douglas. I am in love with both this one and Vintage Birds. But after I finish this one, I can start thinking about when and if and how and why I might need Vintage Birds too. I've been doing pretty good at staying away from the estate sales, but at the last estate sale I went to, it was out in the middle of nowhere between two small towns. It was in some kind of a warehouse. It, it wasn't your typical estate sale. And they really, there were some dishes, there was some bedding, it was really sparse. There was a box and of course that's one of those estate sales where nothing is priced. I flipped through the box just enough and I was in a hurry to get home. Flipped through the box just enough to find some just cross stitch and Teresa Wensler's name and asked the gal how much for each magazine. Guys, two dollars for the box. So I have one, two, three, about half a dozen just cross stitch. Classic cross stitch, which I'm not familiar with. There are a bunch of these in there, and I like that kitchen design. I got the Good Housekeeping Illustrated Book of Needle Crafts, which I haven't, I haven't even come up with time to go through all this yet. Most of it is along the lines of uh, fabric wallets and purse accessories. My mom had this. I think it's up in my sewing room now. And they're both going to go away to somebody else. What I didn't know was hiding in the back of the box are these two patterns. I don't know how to crochet. That's not here nor there. They are total long bassinets with a teddy bear and a dolly and their whole wardrobe and it fits in the bassinet. And oh my gosh, when I was itty bitty, my great-grandma crocheted one of these little bassinets. Hers was in crochet thread. It used the bottom of a yellow deter so dish detergent bottle. It was adorable. I don't know when it left my life. I don't know where it went. It's something I remember having for the blink of an eye back in early childhood. And since I got on to this whole knitting, quilting, stitching thing, I have been looking for the pattern that she used because, well, I think she used a pattern, but it was great Grandma Walters. Maybe she didn't. These are the closest I've come, and 
I want one. I want it for me. And someday I'm going to make and have it for me. There are a bunch of plastic canvas magazines in here. I'm firmly convinced that plastic canvas is one of the few needlework things that I am never going to try. Look at the jack-in-the-box. I would learn to do plastic canvas to make that jack-in-the-box because he's cool. I did do plastic canvas back when I was in elementary school and it was a brief fad among all of us. Other thing, they had embroidery hoops for a quarter a piece. Someone on Instagram was just complaining about the quality of the new ones and so even though I don't, I don't like hoops, I like my Q-snaps. But on Instagram I keep seeing all these wonderful hoop framed embroideries so yeah, those are mine now. And I got it for 50 cents. The pricing at this place was, this is $2. This is 50 cents. The larger version of this, like we all have, that was $5. So it's got, I feared to put a few, few colors for a larger project. It's got a bunch of plastic bobbins. Does anybody store their floss double bound on bobbins like that? This, I've never seen anyone do that before. I'm not saving her floss, but that's worth it. And then I was on Instagram. One Tired Mama Bear is one of the accounts I follow, and she posted her Hobby Lobby haul. You know how they had all the cross stitch kits on clearance? Now they've got yarn on clearance. I did some damage. I'm going to insert a picture of the damage here. Yeah, I did that. Two visits. Lots of drooling and picking and being selective and doing some really loose, wild, and crazy math. I could knit through that in three years at the rate I'm using yarn these days without giving up the other stuff I'm doing these days. So I'm having fun making shawls. That stuff is going to make more shawls. I'm happy. Cross stitch kits are 90% off now. So I don't know why. I don't know when I'm going to knit them, I'm gonna stitch them, I don't know what I'm going to do with them when I stitch them, and I don't care. This is $1.60. I'm not losing sleep over that. And I had been tempted by and not got the carrot and the eggplant back when they were 75% off. So at 90% off, that was a no-brainer. They were coming home with me. No more stash enhancement for a while. No more estate sales, just, but I'm not required to stick to that if something fabulous happens. I'm just carefully considering purchases, and honestly, that Hobby Lobby haul with the yarn, I spent way less than I did back in the day when I would go to a Joann's sale every month or so and pick up some yarn or some fabric at the 40% off sale prices, so if I limit my splurges to this kind of splurge, I'm spending more money and getting more supplies, and spending less money and getting more supplies. Like I said, I don't know if I'm coming or going. I'm tired, guys. Last thing I want to share with you, I did not make a list of notes, which I should have done. I want to talk about, since we're getting into the summer of Salem and playing Halloween before it's Halloween, I want to talk about haunted places. Specifically, the haunted places I have taken my children to without knowing that they were haunted places. Year before last, my husband decided that we would go to spend a night at the Stanley Hotel, which is the inspiration for the Overlook. And it was about that time that my boys were on the internet and they started reading stories about the Clown Motel. If you read about the Clown Motel on the internet, it is the most terrifying, haunted, unimaginable place. I watched the Ghost Adventures clip and saw the cemetery and we had, we've stayed at the Clown Motel five or six times. I had to go Google Earth it to convince myself that there actually is a cemetery. 
All the times we stayed there, I never noticed that cemetery right next to the hotel. Granted, most of the time we checked in after dark and were in a hurry to leave in the morning, but I miss the cemetery. There's nothing scary about the Guan Motel. It is actually our go-to motel if we're passing through Tonopah because there is another motel I cannot remember the name of that I will never set foot in again because that place last time left me with such a bad feeling. Granted, the bad feeling might have been because I was 26 weeks pregnant and had been having contractions every 15 minutes all night long and did not want me and my baby to die in that motel. There have been, in all of our traveling, a handful of places where I really felt a sense of get-me-out-of-here-now dread. The Clown Motel doesn't even come close. It's a nice place to stay if you need a cheap motel and there is great Mexican food at a place down the street. The place I have taken my children to that is apparently haunted is the Enchanted Forest outside of Salem, Oregon. Guys, this one just boggles my mind. My daughter sent me a message telling me there's an upcoming episode of Ghost Adventures filmed at the Enchanted Forest, and we all plan on watching to find out how they are going to make the Enchanted Forest haunted. When I was little enough to believe that she would swallow me, the witch's slide was scary. When I was older, the haunted house was scary. Back when I was in early grade school, birthday parties at the Enchanted Forest were a thing a lot of us did. And I remember going through on my sister's birthday and we got four steps into the front door of the haunted house and everyone except for one little girl wanted out. Except for Beverly. Beverly was adamant that Mrs. Marr had paid for everyone to go through the haunted house and we should all go through the haunted house. She lasted about 30 seconds longer than anyone else. And by then we were all out. I was scared of that haunted house going through it as a teenager on a date with my boyfriend who is now my husband. But guys, I've got to tell you, I am so proud of myself. The boys and I went to the Enchanted Forest last couple weeks ago because we wanted it fresh in our memories to watch it on Ghost Adventures and because it's fun. And we were about halfway through the haunted house. The boys decided they had missed the portion of the hallway where there is a hole in the ceiling and a hand holding a cleaver over your head. And they went back to look for it. They left me standing all by myself in a creaky dark hallway in the haunted house at the Enchanted Forest. And I was fine. Going through a haunted house with preteen and teenage boys is apparently the cure-all for being afraid of haunted houses. On our last trip there four or five years ago, we stopped at every display to figure out how they made it work, and ooh, are those rats, and ooh, there's blood, and haunted houses are different now. It, it's a whole different experience than going through as a little girl. Not that little girls are all chickens. My daughter, when we took her there years and years ago, very bravely went ahead of us through the entire thing by herself. She's gutsier than her mom ever was. So I'm excited to see how the Enchanted Forest is haunted, hoping if we go down south this summer we'll have another night at the Clown Motel, because that would be fun to film. It's not scary. We get a good night's sleep there. Better than the tent. So thanks for watching. If Don't forget to leave a comment if you are interested in Ghoul's Night Out. And I hope to be back soon with another vi floss tube video, but my life is still kind of up in the air right now, so it, it'll probably be at least a couple weeks. Hopefully not as long a gap as it was between these two videos. I actually did have another video that I got mostly filmed, but 
I got a new to me phone. My daughter got the latest and greatest Samsung and sold me her old Moto, whatever this is. So in theory, this should make for better videos, but we're going to have a learning curve while I figure out what it is I'm doing. And I ran out of memory halfway through this video and had to cobble some stuff together. So that's how that's going to go. And oh, I forgot a thing. I didn't take notes this time and relied on my memory and laid everything out to give myself visual cues and I forgot. New shawl, if anyone cares. <laughs> Proof that I'm doing something. It's just garter stitch and easy lace and no pattern and nothing really exciting. But it's a shawl. It's soft and squishy and it has shadowy black stripes. I like those black stripes. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate everybody who watches and comments and hope to see you all again soon. Bye!